And here we are on the Get Foxy Show with the fantastically wonderful Amy Lyle. Amy, thank you so much for being on the Get Foxy Show today. I know that you are just going here and there promoting your fantastic, I say that word a lot, fantastic, but you know, in this case, it is. It's a fantastic book. Thank you. That warms my heart that you got it. Some people get it and some people don't. So I'm so glad that you got it. It's not difficult to get, but for some reason, some people don't get it. So I'm glad that you love it. You bet. Well, it's, it's this fantastic, there again, fantastic. I'm, I'm just feeling fantastic today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this, this book really delves into the, the idea of vulnerability and authenticity and in the crudest <laughs> life's most mortifying ways yes <laughs> now, you wrote this and i mean it's it is a funny book yes i'm a comic so <laughs> think, I, it better be funny right well now how does one kind of start getting into comedy i mean where where did you grow up and was this something just kind of innate in you that needed to be expressed or was this something that you kind of learned over time? Well, I think um, most comics, if you ask them, they come from a wonky childhood as I did. And so my sister and I were comics by the age of five, you know, doing complete, uh, you know, variety shows in our basement that was concrete where the washer and dryer were. And we would roller skate and sing and dance and do uh, comedy shows, mainly imitating our parents and their friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started. And then once you start getting those laughs, then you're addicted forever. Ah. And then the writing just was more of a natural progression from the comedy. You know, I did a lot of writing for my job. I was a corporate trainer and it wasn't, um, I mean, it was, it was fun writing for me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be fun reading for you, but you know, a lot of um, role plays and uh, sales manuals and things like that. And then what prompted my writing career was um, I got married well, remarried to be, it is a book of failures, Terry. I got remarried and I went from uh, one kid part-time to four kids full time. And I was almost going to have a breakdown for real. I mean, it was, it was just, it was crazy. It was too much. I couldn't take it. So my sweet husband, uh, number two sent me on a girl's weekend and half the girls were, uh, stay at home moms and half of the women were working moms. And out of that weekend came some hilarious accusations and preconceived notions about one another. And so, um, the first thing I wrote was a screenplay. It's called Fake Mom. It's, uh, it's in development um, right now. But anyway, cool. when, I, mm -hmm, when I tried to sell or have, not even sell it, have someone represent the screenplay in Hollywood, um, I was referred to an entertainment attorney and the attorney said, I won't represent you. You know, you don't have any money. You're no one. And um, I said, that makes me really expletive sad. And he said, let me give you some free advice. You have to write a book. You have to get on the map before you can just waltz into Hollywood. So um, I immediately, um, well, first I said, what should I write about? I just finished writing this screenplay. He said, write what you expletive know. That's what he said. And immediately uh, my mind, I was like, I have had a lot of failures. And so that's all that happened. So then I, I started writing the book that day. I was not offended that he gave me that advice. It was good advice. And so that same attorney is now working with me um, on my movie. And somebody's inquired about the rights to my book to make it into like a film or sitcom. And he's helping, he would, you know, represent me in that too. So it's so funny. Like, it's just weird the way the world works. That is, you know, that's, counterintuitive <laughs> that you would take the time to write down these failures these things i mean our our society is so driven by success right and what you've done here is you you've flipped the script in a way right and you you've shared some of your life's most embarrassing and yes. Uh, I guess we could say traumatic. Some moments. traumatic. Yes, some. <laughs> but 
it all it does is it seems to make you more endearing. At least it has to oh, me. Thank you. <laughs> it, some people find it more endearing and some people, you know, the, um, the truth is I'm a very happy person and I have a great husband and great kids and great family and, you know, really enjoy my job and all that stuff. And so it's a, um, I am, you know, a person that lives in the suburbs. And so that's the kind of book that it is. It's just funny uh, woman humor. It's not, you know, um, a, you know, um, a tree grows in Brooklyn. You know, I'm not starving. You know, it, it's none of that. I'm not on drugs. And, um, and I love those kind of books. I'm very drawn to pull yourself up from your boot street straps, you know, all that stuff. I love that stuff. But this book, I think... Um, it's okay to be emerged and something funny for a few minutes. I mean, the world has a lot of problems and those problems will still be there. And so I think comedy helps you kind of renew your, your mind and your soul. And it also um, makes you think I'm not alone out there. You know, when someone tells you one of their failures and you, and you can relate, it makes them feel less alone, which makes me so happy when people uh, put that on a, you know, a message or on a review, they're like, Oh my gosh, do you have a camera in my house? This is how my life is running. <laughs> yes, yes. There's there's something to be said for this because I've I've actually experienced this with my wife, where she's run into kind of the the perfect mom crowd where they've done stuff off of say Pinterest. They they sure. see something off of Pinterest and they completely recreate this beautiful thing or this meal or this project and then Emily tries to do something like that and it's like <laughs> oh oh my gosh I am not crafty either anything I touch <laughs> looks like a kindergartner did it but I still have fun doing it I don't care and if you have a book of failures I mean really the worse my crafty things look the better for me right I get mileage out of that but I understand but you know what it's not about perfection it's if somebody enjoys doing that then do it right you bet. Well, that's what we're doing here is we're kind of rebelling against <laughs> that that culture of, oh, you have to be this certain way. Right. And that's that's part of why I put this show on is because we're uh, we're talking holistic health, natural beauty, and passionate living because I, I run into as as a guy, it's it's funny. Because I, I see from the outside all of the pressure, and I'm, I'm just awakening to this. <laughs> right. But the, there is so much pressure on women today to be a certain way. Right. From, I, think they get, I think people present a lot of times on social media their best filtered selves. And... Um, I don't do that. And you know that because I thought this was just audio and you're like, Amy, it's video. Do you want to fix your hair? I'm like, nah, nah, <laughs> I don't care. So, um, I do think there is a beauty in, um, not being so wrapped up in, and, and I do it all the time too, by accident. Like when you meet someone, your go-to questions are kind of like, where do you work? Where do your kids go to school? And if you're if you're on the upper tier of those questions, those questions are not offensive to you. But if you're kind of on the bottom tier, it's kind of you kind of like, uh, you might as well just be asking someone, how much money do you make? You know, that's what those questions are. Versus, um, I, I was in an event the other day and I sat down and the woman next to me had one blue shoe on and one black shoe on. And she's like, Oh my gosh, I ran out of the house and I have one blue shoe on and one black shoe on. I'm like, you and I are gonna be friends. Like, that's authentic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was hilarious. And so I think if you um not to tell your deepest, darkest secrets to someone you just met. That's very off-putting. I don't know if you've ever met anyone like that. That's too much. But just to be in your initial conversation, to find out about what the person, you know, I think a great question is what books do you like? What movies do you like? You know, that's a better question than where do you live or how much money do you make or, you know, where do you go on vacation? You don't mean to be insulted, but some people think that's insulted. Well, you definitely, at least, when I talk to people and find out, yeah, oh, they like that book? Wow, that's kind of interesting. Oh, hey, we both like those kind of books. You, you're my kind of person. It does give you a much better 
insight into that person as opposed to just asking, where do you live? What do you do? Right. Like if someone told me they didn't like old school or bridesmaids or Monty Python, I'd be like, Hmm, I don't know if we're going to be Brit. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, I guess we could, but, um, I'm like, what? Or if they don't like, um, Eddie Murphy or Kristen Wake or Kevin Hart or, uh, you know, these funny, funny comedians, if, if they're like, Oh, I don't, I don't like them. I'm kind of like, who are you? <laughs> Cause those are my people, but to each his own, you know, teach his own. What would you consider to be foxy? What's your definition of foxy, Amy? I would say chasing after your passion, even if that is on a very small scale, you know, let's say you have kids and you're working a full-time job, but on the side, you know, on the weekends or one hour a day, you, um, take that yoga class that you love, or you write, or you take guitar lessons because you've always wanted to, or whatever you explore, um, you know, something that I think is very foxy for people to pursue on any level their passions. And has there ever been a time in your life where you weren't feeling so foxy? (laughs) What did you do to regain that foxiness? Well, I wasn't feeling very foxy at all when I got remarried and I had those four kids in the house in 24 hours a day, which I like kids and my kids are perfectly normal, but it just was a shock to my system because I had had a travel job and, um, I just, I just wasn't ready for that. And so, um, I applied to get this little acting role for a nonprofit and it's a reoccurring role. And I've been doing it now for like four or five years. And just knowing that every Sunday, you know, they'd send me the script during the week and I'd practice and, um, just looking forward to that tiny little thing on Sunday, slice of Sunday was so fun. And then, um, and then I started writing for them, you know, these little tiny plays. I was like, who does these funny plays? And so I submitted a writing sample. And so that gave me a lot of of joy too. And it got me out of the house. They had two like writing meetings a month. And, um, so that kind of got me out of my funk is pursuing, pursuing something kind of on my own, of my own rather. Now, you're doing, are, are you currently still doing this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an, Every it's Sunday. still recurring. You can see me at Brownsbridge Church in front of a 300 second and third graders. Sometimes I'm Moses. Sometimes I'm uh, Grapes. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you never know. You never know. You never know. I get recognized a lot in the grocery store by second graders. I'm, you know, so (laughs) it's super, super fun. Super fun. Excellent. Yeah. So what I'm hearing from you is that being seen helps light you up. Have I got that right? Yeah, I think it's the, um, reaction from the kids that lights me up. You know, they're so, they, they're second grade. They totally get my humor and um, they're easy to please. They're really fun. And of course, for my book, um, I do love it when people say, you lifted me up. You lifted me up. This is, I was feeling down like, oh gosh, I'm trying to juggle being a mom and being an employee and being a wife. And you lifted me up. Like you have bad days too. And so um, I love that. That gives me a lot of joy. When we were talking prior to this interview, uh, you were telling me that uh, you've gotten some reviews from your books, from from readers, Mm -hmm. some good, some not so good. (laughs) Some hate me, sure. (laughs) I'm going to skip the hate, and I would like to hear one of the testimonials from a a reader uh, that you felt just really touched your heart. Um, sure. Um, one woman said, this is so funny. This cracks me up. I mean, some of them are very beautifully, beautifully written and they warm my heart, but this one hit me right in the face and I loved it. (laughs) And she said, um, I just finished your book and it made me feel, it made me, it makes me feel like I suck less as a mother and a wife. (laughs) And I was like, Oh, you're welcome. (laughs) 
So that um, that makes me feel good. That's excellent. And you know, the bad reviews of you people out there that you know are thinking about writing, anything that you do in a public forum, anything, and you know this because you have a public podcast, you're going to get some you're just going to catch people at the wrong time of their life or the wrong time of their day. And they're going to lash out at you. And it used to kind of, it used to really hurt my feelings and it used to uh, make me mad, but you know what? Um, it doesn't anymore. I kind of feel sorry for those people that they're, I mean, if you're reading a book where someone is falling down flights of steps and you know, in front of her entire corporation and her suit rolls up and her underwear shows and the underwear says happy buns on it. Um, and you know, you're at a concert and you had Thai food and you have IBS and you have to throw away your underwear. You know, you're falling down steps and pooping your pants and people are like, I hate you. It's just like, what is going on in your life that is so bad? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Oh my goodness. Okay. Or funny fights with my husband or funny fights with the kids or stuff like that. So when someone, they usually lash out at me, um, because they have a certain perception of, uh, social, my social economic level, which, um, it, it just is, I'm a middle-class <laughs> person living in the suburbs. So I don't know what, what can you do? You just have to move on. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. You bet. Luckily, I've been doing this podcast for about a year now, and, and I'm still growing. Mm -hmm. so I haven't gotten any, you know, really <laughs> vitriolic hate mail as of yet. But, you know, <laughs> I'm as it grows. Yes. You know, when I got my first bad review, my girlfriend, Carla, who is a motivational coach, so she helps people grow, you know, their businesses and stuff. And she's like, congratulations, girl, you made it. <laughs> and then my other girlfriend said, um, you know, uh, she sent me this funny meme and it said, uh, you hate me and you still follow me. You're a fan, bitch. <laughs> it's like, that made my day. I'm like, yeah. You know, if you hate me, why are you still following me? Why? You know, that's weird. It's totally weird. And yet yeah. at the same time, it really demonstrates the power of your story. Yeah. I mean, I guess any, it's, it's, I think of my book as art, right? It's art. And so to impact people um, on any level is a good thing, is a good thing. Luckily, it impacts 99% of people on a very positive level. And, and um, you know, I don't like every writer and every actor. I, I personally am not one to lash out. I just kind of, I, I still admire them for putting themselves out there. And so, you know, whatever, I'm not gonna say anything about it, but um, other people feel very powerful of sitting in their offices and uh, cranking out nasty, stuff to people all day long. And you can usually see their other reviews that they're giving and they're normally not very generous to anyone. So that makes me feel less like it's not me. They're just whatever they touch, they're going to hate on. Oh, well, let's talk about funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of kind of changing the subject, I'd like to know who is Foxy in your world right now? Who embodies Foxy to you? Hmm. Okay. Somebody who I think is Foxy is one of my friends, Lisa Odie is her name. And she has an interesting background. She worked as a stewardess on a, on a yacht. And oddly, she had this uh, uh, giant client that came on, like the owner of Yahoo or something. I can't remember. You'd have to ask her. She'd be a good person for you to interview. And um, he tipped out all of them like $5,000 or something like this ridiculous amount. And she used that money and she went to um, culinary school. And long story, she now kind of uses her skills. She also is a graphic designer for the National Enquirer. Like she has this cool background. And um, she put all of those skills, the cake making skills and the graphic design. And she created this blog and she has like a million followers and like 55,000 followers on Facebook, 100,000 followers on Instagram. And she's very dedicated to her craft. And she, you know, she gets paid, um, you know, companies pay you if you're a giant like that to use their ingredients. Like, hey, we're a blueberry company. If you make three blueberry recipes, you know, we'll pay you. So she's making income off of it. But um, 
she's, you know, taking something that's her passion, making money. And what I think is Foxy is about her is she's constantly um, trying to improve her craft. She's, you know, she takes a lot of classes and she's just really laser. We do a lot of collaborative things and um, I just, I really admire her. Now, how are you working to improve your craft? Um, I <laughs> am doing these podcasts <laughs> and I have a minimum writing limit every day because I'm working my second book. So I have a minimum, I have to write at least 1000 words a day. It's not very many words actually. And so I, I block my time out very well. I come from sales, so you had to block your time. And so every day I try to reach out to somebody to say, Hey, would your listeners or viewers or audience be interested in my story or um, reach out to do something collaborative? Like, Hey, can we do this on your blog or your show or whatever? And, um, or send an article to a magazine or whatever. So, um, that's what I try to do to improve my craft is block my time to do a little bit every day. Cause you can't do everything, right? That is right. Well, good. That's a, that's a solid answer. I was thinking you were going to be saying, oh, well, I'm just going to fail more, Terry. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. My, my new book is called The Failures of My Friends. And you'd be amazed. Like It's harder than you think to get people to discuss their fails because um, I looked this up. This is a true fact. Like Failure for people, the fear of being embarrassed, you know, of failing is like right up there with death and like snakes. <laughs> people, people do not like to fail. And so I'm like, tell me one failure story. You know, it could be on an airplane. It could be about a coworker, you know, any funny story. And people are like, <laughs> and so then I have to get really specific and be like, you have to give me one. So I'm like 20,000 words in, I need 30,000 more words. So audience, Terry's audience, you foxy people out there, if you have a good fail, you know, you got to send it to me. And where can they send it to you? Oh, they can send it to me on my website, which is www.amylyle.me. I am not a narcissist.com was taken. So it's <laughs> amylyle.me. And then my Facebook page is the same. And uh, what else? Uh, Twitter is at Amy Lyle. Instagram, I think, is at author Amy Lyle. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I'm going to be putting a link to your book in the show notes. Okay. And I can also include that contact information in the show notes as well. That way, all the Vulpanistas, our <laughs> followers of all things Foxy, can find your info and get that book and have a laugh and realize that, you know, maybe my life doesn't suck quite <laughs> so bad. Exactly. And you know what's so crazy is my heroes like Trevor Noah and, um, you know, Tina Fey and Amy Schumer and Chelsea Handler and Kevin Hart, like all those people, those are my heroes. And so to see my book, which like today, I think it's number five in eBooks, you know, some days it's number 12, but it stayed in the bestsellers the whole, since it released. But to see my book, I mean, one day it was like Amy Poehler, me, Amy Lyle, and then Amy Schumer. I'm like, Amy, Amy, the Amy's are rocking it today. I mean, it's so weird to see my little book, you know, independent published, you know, on Amazon in the midst of people that I love. It's just crazy. I would hope that you would get to meet some of those ladies. I would love to meet some of those ladies. I was able to interview uh, my favorite author of all time, Jenny Lawson, for this tiny little magazine that I write for in town. And she was so gracious and sweet. I love her. So um, kudos to Jenny Lawson. <laughs> well, if I get any of those ladies on this show, I will be sure to pass along your contact info. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be dreamy? <laughs> Can you imagine having like Tina Fey on your show? It could happen. You should write her. It could happen. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, she's very foxy. <laughs> she's super foxy. We are bumping up on time here, Amy. So I want to ask you one last question. All right. What is the one piece of advice that you would have for my listeners about how to stay foxy? How to stay foxy is to every day do something you love. Every day, even if it's eat one cupcake or it is watch 10 minutes of your favorite movie 
or um, I think to make people foxy, you reach out to others. So compliment one friend and you'll feel good and they'll feel good. So, um, you know, have gratitude, things like that. I think make people feel better. Normally, you know, when you're serving others, you get more out of it than you even give. So do something for yourself and try to do one thing every day for somebody else. I think keeps you foxy. Amen to that. <laughs> well, Amy, Thank you so much for taking the time today. I very much appreciate and honor you for bringing some joy and some laughter and some light into the world. That is not a small thing nowadays. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on your show. Thank you. You're a great host. It was super fun.